This is Michelle Brim, Schlock and Naturalist, and welcome to Virtual Experiences with the Hancock Park District. It's Friday, so we're hitting the trails. Today you're joining me at Litzenbring Memorial Woods, and we're by our big activity park. So even though it doesn't feel like spring today, it will warm up, it's starting to green up, there's flowers out, and that means more animal activity. So you might wonder, what happens if you see some of these animals that maybe have been asleep all winter? So today I want to talk about bats. So they've been hibernating, some of them migrate, and you are starting to see them in the area in the evening. So what happens if you find one in your yard? Well, keep pets and children away from it. Try to keep it secure. And always wear gloves if you're going to handle it. So just because it's found on the ground doesn't mean it's sick or anything. It could just be disoriented or something else. So what you want to do is get it to a higher place. So if you have um, a chimney or anything with brick or even a box that you can get it off the ground and kind of leave it be and it will make its way maybe higher up on your chimney because they need to drop and able to fly so even if it's during the day which again we know bats come out at night again it's not so out of place if you do see one so you can gently hang it on there remember hang them upside down that's how they hang and prefer to hang and then if you go back and check it in a day or so Hopefully the bat won't be there. So if you're trying to attract bats to your yard, there are a couple different ways to do that. One thing would be not use pesticides and other chemicals, and that's gonna help more than just bats. You wanna keep dead trees, as long as they're not really any of your buildings in your property, because some of them will like to hide and sleep underneath the bark and things on those trees. You also want to do maybe a bat box. So that's why we're here at our activity barn. And if you come to visit, you might be very familiar with the three large bat boxes that we have hanging above me here. So we do have active bats that live here. And just some things when maybe trying to find out how to purchase or maybe make your own bat box. So the size that you see up there is probably a good size. So you want it to be about 24 inches long by 16 inches wide. So this seems to be an optimum size. There are smaller ones which are okay, but this way it creates enough thermal heat inside there when you have the different bats. Also when building them inside, it's, it's nice to have kind of that roughage inside so they can hang off of it. So you don't need screening or anything like that. As long as it's some type of rough wood, you're okay. You don't want to really use any kind of oil-based paints because that could bother the bats. Now you notice ours were a dark brown. So in our area, it depends on the um, high temperature, the average high temperature in the summer, which is about 83, 84 degrees. So you're okay with a dark brown or even black because they want to have that warmth. So we put ours here on this side where they're going to get some great sun um, throughout the day and you want about six hours of sunshine if at all possible because that heats up that box and keeps them nice and warm. Now the best benefit of all is what they eat and those are insects and mainly mosquitoes. So if you have mosquitoes in your property you definitely want to attract bats because they will naturally take care of them. So we'll have a link to show uh, some optimum bat boxes if you want to try some on your own. Remember to join us on Monday for Discovery Stories at 1 o'clock. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.